PowerPoint. Um, we an earlier an earlier video was on mutations, and you'll recall, folks, that that's mutations, which was slide 12, is the start of the lecture exam three information. So we did a video on mutations, and now um, this is the second video, folks, for lecture exam three. This is going to be on um, horizontal gene transfer in bacteria. And I did update these four slides, slide 17, 18, 19, and 20, um, and I just copied those slides and I put them in a file on our um, Canvas module, just if you'd already printed out the slides so you wouldn't have to feel like you had to print out the whole PowerPoint. Um, and I did um, post the updated 2020 Microbial Genetics Part 2 PowerPoint. But again, if you'd printed out the slides already, folks, don't, don't worry about it. Um, just take a look at the, um, the Word document that just has the four updated slides. So we're going to start then on slide 17. So folks, um, that's not the right slide. Let me back up here. Okay, so folks, this should be slide 17. And what we first want to do before we dive into horizontal or lateral gene transfer in bacteria is to just talk about two different types of gene transfers. Um, so um, by gene, I mean genetic information. So one type of gene transfer is the kind of gene transfer that we humans are familiar with. This is where um, one generation um, of organisms pass their genetic information down to their offspring, so the second generation. So we're familiar um, with um, vertical gene transfer, as I said, in humans. So because we're sexually reproducing organisms, um, one example of vertical, uh, vertical gene transfer is when mom makes an egg and the egg carrying mom's genetic information then is going to be fertilized by sperm that dad has made and the sperm carries dad's genetic information <clears throat> during fertilization the um, genetic information from mom and dad will combine and that's going to result in a genetically unique baby <clears throat> so the reason this is called a vertical transfer is we're going from one generation to the next okay so from generation one to generation two, and if you can imagine an arrow uh, pointing in the vertical direction. Um, <clears throat> another example of vertical gene transfer, this would be in humans, um, the cells that don't give rise to our gametes, don't give rise to our sperm and ova or eggs. So for example, folks, um, another example of vertical gene transfer would be, let's say one of your skin cell divides into two cells. So that process is referred to as mitosis and cytokinesis. So the parent cell is going to copy its chromosomal DNA and then divide in two. Um, so we could say the, the first cell was generation one and then the two offspring cells would be generation two. So that's an example of vertical trans vertical gene transfer that doesn't involve sexual reproduction. Um, and then in bacteria, and of course you guys, this is where we're focused is on bacteria. When uh, <clears throat> in bacteria, say this is E. coli, we have our <clears throat> parent E. coli and it's ready to divide into, it's going to copy its chromosomal DNA, <clears throat> divide into making sure that each of the offspring, the daughter cells, has a chromosome. So again folks, <clears throat> this would be an example of vertical gene transfer from one generation to the next. Okay. Now what's wild in bacteria is not only do they do vertical gene transfer, they can do this wild horizontal or lateral gene transfer. And so we could, we could say this is um, transfer of genes between cells of the same generation, right? Um, you, you might think of this as um, gene transfer between two neighbors right here. And folks, just um, as we use um, um, certain terminology in like um, blood transfers or organ transplants, we're going to use the same vocabulary. We're going to say the bacterium that's going to share DNA with its neighbor, this is going to be our donor, and then this will be our recipient. A recipient, right? So if a donor shares some DNA with a recipient, a neighboring bacterium, that recipient then will end up as a recombinant bacterium, a recombinant cell, because it's going to carry DNA from the donor and from itself. 
right? So we're combining genetic information from, from two different cells. Now, some people, and I don't think this is a good idea, folks, some people call this bacterial sex, and it's because of one way, one way that the bacteria transfer their DNA. Um, but remember, we should think of sex as when two genetically different organisms make gametes, like the sperm and the egg. And it's through combining of the genetic information of the sperm and egg um, that we come up with a genetically unique offspring. That is sex, right? So bacteria don't make gametes. So if somebody tells you this is bacterial sex, well, not really. Okay, we'll keep going here. So again, folks, a lot of, as always, just lots of, lots of um, vocabulary to get under our belt. So we're going to be talking about genetic recombination, and I, I'd like us to think of genetic recombination between um, two cells or two different organisms. So genetic recombination, we're, we're talking about mixing genetic information from two different cells or two different organisms. So again, folks, one of the examples we used earlier, sexual reproduction in humans, um, sexual reproduction would be an example of genetic recombination because we have one genetically unique parent, mom, and genetically unique dad, okay? So mom makes the, um, the female gametes, the ovum or the egg, dad makes the male gamete, the sperm, right? And in the process of fertilization, the sperm fertilizes the egg, and basically what's happening, the sperm and the egg are combining their genetic information, and the result is gonna be the baby, and the baby is gonna have this absolutely absolutely unique combination of genes from mom and from dad. So half the baby's genes come from mom, half the, ba half the baby's um, genes come from dad. Or actually that's a, that's a bad way of saying it. So half of the baby's genetic information is from mom and half the baby's genetic information from, is from dad. Um, so we're going to call this genetic recombination. Um, and this is an example of vertical gene transfer because mom and dad were generation one, right? They combine their genetic information to give rise to the baby, their offspring, and that's generation two. So the baby is carrying both mom and dad's DNA. Okay, so vertical transfer. Now what's so wild, as we mentioned earlier, you guys, um, bacteria can also um, perform genetic recombination. But in this case, it's gonna be horizontal or lateral gene transfer. And again, this is between bacteria of the same generation. So maybe they're living in the same neighborhood, like in your intestine. So the, um, just as we use in blood or organ um, donations, we're gonna have the donor bacterium. And the donor bacterium is gonna supply donor DNA and the donor DNA will be transferred to a neighboring recipient bacterium. And as, as the consequence then, this recipient bacterium will be carrying DNA from itself and from the donor. So this recipient is what we call a recombinant, right? It's carrying genetic information from two different bacteria. And just like folks, if like I received, say I received a liver transplant, right? Um, the genetic information from the, the donated liver, that comes from one, one person, one organism, and then I have all my other organs with all my, my DNA. So um, if I was a liver um, recipient, transplant recipient, I would be a type of recombinant as well. So folks, this is, um, it's a little bit tricky when bacteria are going to share their DNA. And the problem is if the donor, if the donor transfers a linear piece of donor DNA to the recipient, linear DNA inside a bacterium is seen as a danger sign. And it's because um, we want to remember that most bacteria have circular chromosomes. So the bacteria would recognize, quote unquote, linear DNA as being foreign. And most likely, um, most likely the bacteria would see it, quote unquote, as bacterial virus, bacteriophage DNA. So to protect themselves against bacteria uh, viruses, bacteriophage, bacteria have evolved enzymes that will destroy linear DNA, right? So... This is going to be a, a problem for the donor linear DNA to survive within the recipient bacterium. So about the only way I know that linear DNA can survive within the bacterium is if the linear DNA 
um, undergoes a process called homologous recombination. Okay, so homologous means similar recombination. We're gonna we're gonna mix the genetic information from, in this case, two bacteria. So, folks, it's a really complicated process, and it deserves hours of lecture all all to its own. But we're just gonna really simplify it here, folks. So let's pretend we're inside the recipient bacterium. Here's the donor linear DNA. And here's a section of the recipient circular chromosome. Now the reason this is called homologous is the donated donor DNA, there has to be some sequence of DNA similar or homologous to some sequence of DNA on the recipient's chromosome. And this is why it's called homologous. And then through a complicated series of events that involves many enzymes and many protein, that donor DNA sequence will basically replace that homologous um, sequence of DNA on the recipient's chromosome. So it, the, the recipient's um, homologous sequence would get cut out and destroyed, and then the donor similar sequence would replace the recipient's chromosome, or that, that sequence of homologous recipient chromosome. So here, folks, this is what we want to focus on. This would be the recipient and you can see through homologous recombination, some of the donor DNA has been inserted into the recipient's chromosome. And the result will be the recipient will end up being a recombinant bacterium carrying genetic information um, from the donor and, of course, from itself. And this, folks, since um, bacteria only carry out asexual reproduction, right? They copy their DNA and then divide into, so it's asexual. It's a disadvantage um, that bacteria can't carry out true sexual reproduction because remember, in sexual reproduction, we're combining genetic information from two genetically distinct parents, and that means the offspring have this incredible genetic diversity, and we want genetic diversity as a population, right? So um, our offspring will have a better chance of surviving in an ever-changing environment. So since bacteria can't carry out um, sexual reproduction, this horizontal gene transfer, um, including this homologous recombination, is a way for bacteria to really increase the genetic diversity in their populations and thus increase the chance that they can survive in an ever-changing environment. So folks, this is um, just the um, showing you how homologous recombination um, would occur in the bacterial world, and we'll come back and we'll look at, at this this process here of um, horizontal gene transfer. So this is an example, folks, of what's called transformation, which we'll describe in, in another slide. So folks, just to get us oriented, here's our recipient bacterial, here is our recipient bacterium, and there's the double-stranded recipient's chromosome. And folks, over here, we're presuming the donor bacterium has died, and it's lysed, and it breaks open. And so when the donor dies and releases its DNA, the DNA gets broken up into these little fragments. So here's a fragment of donor DNA, and you can see it's dark purple, and the recipient's chromosome is light purple. That would be sweet, huh? Okay, and these little letters, A, B, C, and D, um, are, are showing locations of specific genes. And notice that the donor has a different version of those genes, has different alleles is the fancy term compared to the recipient. So the recipient also has the genes A, B, C, and D. But notice the, um, the, the version, the allele is different, and they're just showing it by uppercase here and lowercase there. We'll talk about how the donor DNA will be taken up by the recipient cell. So here's that donor linear DNA, and remember it's going to be destroyed unless it somehow can insert itself into the recipient's chromosome. So again, folks, if there are similar sequences on the donor DNA in the recipient's chromosome, right, um, the donor DNA can actually replace that sequence of the recipient's chromosome. And again, folks, this is really simplified. It would actually take two generations for this to occur, but we're, they've simplified it here, which I'm grateful for. So here we can see, folks, the homologous, the similar sequences of donor DNA are replacing the parts of the recipient's chromosome here. The recipient's chromosomes, those parts get cut out. So down here we see the donor DNA has replaced part of the recipient's chromosome, and the part of the recipient's chromosome got cut out, got destroyed, right, by the, those bacterial enzymes that recognize linear DNA is 
danger, you know, bacterial DNA. So folks, the result then is our recombinant is now carrying genetic information from the donor and genetic information from itself. So this cell then would be called a recombinant. Okay, and we'll we'll come back, you guys, and talk about this um, why we use the term transformed in this particular in this particular process. Okay, and then just as a side note, you guys, um, we'll see that bacteria donors can transfer copies of their chromosomes. No, oh, I said that wrong, you guys. <laughs> Um, we'll see later that donor bacteria can transfer their plasmids to recipients. And remember, plasmids are circular. They're like little mini chromosomes. So if a donor transfers a plasmid to a recipient, the plasmid doesn't have to insert itself into the chromosome. It will not be destroyed because remember, it's circular. So the bacterial um, enzymes don't recognize it as being foreign, as being bacterial virus, bacteriophage DNA. So um, donated circular plasmids can just exist in the cytoplasm of the recipient with, without being integrated into the chromosome. So folks, that was, a, that was a long intro. So why don't we stop the this video here. We'll say this is an intro to horizontal gene transfer in bacteria. And then we'll do a follow-up video. Um, maybe Maybe we'll do like three follow-up videos, folks, for all three examples of horizontal gene transfer. We'll talk about genetic transformation, we'll talk about conjugation, and we'll talk about transduction. Okay, so we'll close this one here, and then we'll do a few more, um, a few more videos to finish this section. Sorry, folks. I can't get back to my. Um, I need to quit my movie.